I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Sarah Paulson, who stars as Linda Tripp in the FX limited series Impeachment, American Crime Story. Uh, the first thing I want to ask is, what were your initial feelings about Tripp when the scandal was first unraveling in the 90s, and did any of those feelings change in the process of playing her? Oh, golly, gosh, yes. Um, my my uh, impression of Linda in the early 90s, I was, I don't know, I was not old enough, I think, to process it in any, uh, any way that was uh, deep or considered. Um, I did, I think, what most people did, regardless of their age, which was take it sort of at face value that she was a bad friend and that she did something um, reprehensible and morally questionable and um, all of that. I just sort of believed all of that and I didn't really give it much thought. So when I, be when I first read the script, I thought, oh, Linda's the villain and I'm going to be playing the villain in this story. Um, but of course, your job as an actor is to try to find the human being um, particularly when you're playing a real person uh, and particularly when there is a societal uh, commitment and decision made about who that person is and the why of, of their choices. Um, it's not interesting to approach uh, playing something with something already predetermined predetermined about, about the character. It was much more interesting to me to sort of figure out what made her tick. And again, not what made, like I was not approaching it this was not dissimilar from, from the Marsha Clark of it all, although the character is obviously very, very different. But in terms of my approach of, you know, I'm not setting out to sort of dismantle how this person is, is held, you know, in terms of society. Uh, but the consequence of, of doing that deeper dive often leads to a greater understanding of a person, which then leads to uh, a sort of multidimensional um, uh take on the person, which is, I think, much more fair. Um, and we often don't do that, particularly uh, in, in people we are told to revile for various reasons, sometimes justifiable, sometimes not. Um, so I certainly, once I, once I did a deep enough dive and I listened to many, many episodes of the Slow Burn podcast from that, which was focused on the Clinton um, scandal, um, I listened to that a lot. And we had a lot of time to do that because, of course, we were supposed to start shooting in March of 2020. And that all got uh, derailed and we didn't start, I think, until October. So I was, um, I had lots of time to <laughs> listen to her voice. And obviously there's so much material uh, to listen to, which is always it's just an interesting thing to take away the component of um, sight and just think about sound in terms of playing a, a person that's real and in terms of all the little nuances you can, you can pick up about, about them. And uh, I wanna just, uh take that to a bit of a larger scope uh, in terms of the scandal as a whole. Uh, were there any other aspects of the Clinton Lewinsky scandal that you found yourself reevaluating after participating in this project? Oh, I'm sure the Paula Jones component uh, for, for sure. Um, I was in, um, you know, with the legions and throngs of people who sort of dismissed her um, uh, in a way that, that I, I deeply regret. And of course, um, have re reconsidered, um, even though politically, eh, uh, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other story. Um, uh, you know, m all of it, I mean, all of it really settled into this place in me because I was the age that I was, which was in my, I think it was my late twenties, 98. I mean, who knows at this point, but I, I was not yet 30. No, I was not yet 30 at all. Um, not that that's a marker for like all, all knowing <laughs> that's so certainly, certainly not a benchmark for that, but um, I was just so young that I think I just, and, and self-involved quite honestly in pursuing my acting career and, you know, desperate to, to find ways to be stimulated in that, in that regard. So I sort of just, I thought what he did had done was sort of despicable from a, from a um, family standpoint and from the humiliation of, of Hillary and, and of Chelsea. And I thought about that probably more than I considered any, any of the other players. And that also shifted, um, not how I held that for, for um, Chelsea and, and Hillary, but it just became more balanced in terms of thinking about what Monica experienced and Paula and Linda, all of them. I mean, all of it was shifted uh, once we started working on this show, certainly. So um, I want to kind of going back to what you were talking about uh, in uh, your answer to the first question, what were some of the positive aspects of Trip that you tried to emphasize in order to make her a more three-dimensional character? 
rather than like you said this like just like oh she's a villain yeah uh well some of it was greatly helped by sarah burgess had written a, an incredibly complicated multi-dimensional person on the page it was very clear to me when i first read it that you know, like I said, when I first got the script, I thought, oh, this is what this is going to be. She's, I'm going to play the villain this season, and that's going to be sort of exciting and interesting. And um, I never really have gotten to do that in that, in that landscape. Um, so that was exciting to me. And then, of course, once I started reading it, I thought, oh, this, that's not really the take here. And again, it's not, um, uh, I don't mean to sort of excuse the things that Linda did um, and sort of turn them into, um, anecdotal inconsequential acts because they were not they had tremendous consequences and they affected the lives of everybody involved um enormously i mean so much so that i don't know that this ever would have been made public if it weren't for linda um which is a you know tough pill to swallow but in terms of finding things to act like to access or bring forward about linda that would make her more likable I just didn't really think about it that way. I thought I personally thought Linda was pretty funny. I sort of uh, could relate to Linda's frustrations in a work environment and how easily irritated she was by people who weren't doing things the right way. I personally, um, this may be a surprise to people, but maybe not um, because I don't know everyone who might be <laughs> listening to this, but I, I'm an incredibly um, by the book. I really like rules and I really like things to be done a certain way. And so I could certainly relate to Linda's uh, frustration of having to deal with other people in a work environment. It's certainly, and certainly since we've been, you know, living in this virtual world, you know, really not having to come up against a lot of that, uh, all of that was readily accessible to me, but I found that to be really relatable. Um, I do think Linda attempted to be a good friend to Monica in the beginning. I do think um, Linda was a wonderful mother. Um, and, uh, you know, I tried to, I tried to do the only thing I knew how to do, which was just to try to remember that Linda was a human being. Um, and not every action a person takes is done with uh, malintent. It's just not always uh, malicious. It's just sometimes I think you can find yourself on a fast moving train that you that you may have, you know, been conducting, but then you don't know how to stop it or get off. And then it's just all this sort of steamrolling thing that that sort of ran away from her and the rest of the country, you know. So uh, I will never forget uh, when the first pictures came out uh, from of you as Linda Tripp, and mm. I, I and I feel like the the makeup crew on this show are almost like another character because I mean mm. you you so nailed they so nailed the look and I what I'm curious about though is uh, do you find yourself having to approach things as an actor differently when you have all of that on you uh, uh, and, and it can seem like it can obscure the performance sometimes. Do you feel you have to put in uh, another effort there? I mean, I think it's sort of up to an audience really. I sort of, I like the idea of trusting the viewers to sort of go, I buy that or I don't. And hopefully if a performance is truthful enough, it can sort of transcend the, you know, the truth is I really wasn't wearing that much, surprisingly. Like on my face, I was wearing a nose and I had a neck. That was it. The rest of it is all me. I mean, my bleached eyebrows and my, we shaved them and changed the shape of them. And, um, you know, I wore those glasses and some of her facial expressions, I think also sort of changed the, the, the shape of my, or what is, what is, what is, um, what people usually accept and determine is my face, you know, but there's nothing more exciting and challenging as an actor than to try to embody a person who is very different from you. You know, a lot of times um, as actors, particularly as women, we get cast uh, in a particular uh, fashion that is sort of limiting and kind of boring from an acting standpoint. So the idea that I could play someone so, so vastly different from me, not only physically, but, uh, internally is just an extraordinary challenge. And I personally love looking in the mirror and not recognizing what I see uh, looking back at me. Um, and, you know, like we made a decision, Linda had very, very blue eyes, quite pretty blue eyes. And we just made the decision not, not to wear the contacts that would give me that more probably exact look of Linda simply for that reason of, I thought, you know, with everything else happening, I don't want to, create another barrier um, because this is hopefully where everyone's going to be taking in Linda's story and Linda's truth is 
is through the peepers. So I figured I should keep them as exposed as possible. <laughs> so, so my internal Linda story and work that I was doing would have a chance to kind of come out of my eyes. So um, uh, what was uh, Beanie Feldstein uh, like to have as a screen partner for so much of this? Because I really think she's your primary uh, yeah. uh, person that you interact, that you regularly interact with uh, in yeah. the show. It was mostly Beanie and then and then it became um, my daughter, Emma, who played, um, uh, wow. <laughs> did you like that brain? She's like, Allison. Um, it's been a long time since we did this. So, um, but uh, yeah, Emma who played Allison Tripp and, and Beanie were my, were my predominant um, team partners. Uh, Beanie to me, uh, you know, we were really, partners in crime you know we were really we we shot this you know eight months into the pandemic we shot for almost a year um we were both and continue to be incredibly covid conscious and very concerned uh, not only about ourselves but about each other and those around us and so we took it incredibly seriously and i'm sure it caused a lot of consternation and and things uh for for the set in general because we were really so hand sanitizer, you know, we were, we were really, we were intense about it, um, but we were able to make it through uh, production safely, which was, which was wonderful. But I just, I've worked with a lot of extraordinary actors and I've been very, very lucky having a real uh, sense of camaraderie and I've got your back and I'm your, you know, real partnership in my working relationships has been really extraordinary. And Beanie was right up there with, with any uh, great acting partner. And also just, work partner you know we were really we were both producing the show and it was both important to us to to um make our voices heard in in that regard and I think we just really really felt like we had enormous support in one another and, and it was just it was a real big leap we were both taking and you know playing these women and we were both scared and it was very nice to jump into what felt like a cold pond with the warm hand of Beanie Feldstein in mind I can say that so um it, it, you, you know, you've played uh, quite a list of people that of these, uh, you know, very politically uh, prominent people. Uh, I would say three, I guess you could say four in Nicole Wallace in Game Change, Alice McRae in Miss America, um, uh, Marsha Wallace in People vs. OJ, and now Linda Tripp. Uh, which one did you find yourself enjoy playing the most? Oh gosh, that's like asking me to pick one of my favorite children. Um, I don't have children, but I have dogs and I just couldn't do that. But um, in terms of picking a favorite, but I will say the, the playing of Linda Tripp was the greatest acting challenge of my life. One that I was not even sure if I could do it. Um, and it remains to this day, the thing I'm the most proud of um, because it, it was hard in a way that, uh, in hard is probably it was chat it was incredibly challenging um and i personally love that i sort of feel like the minute you start to get very comfortable uh and and um complacent in your work uh is just not that's just not really a an interesting place for me so i was terrified to do this uh and i was i was just doubting myself left right and center and um but ultimately, at the end of the day, I can say I'm proud of what I did. And that is that is something that has not come easily for me as a as a person around my work. So um, it, it was a whole lot of fun because she was a really complicated character where nobody was afraid to um, nobody felt the need to sort of dull her edges. It was you know, a lot of times too, you try to find, you know, you're playing a, a complicated woman and they want to soften the things about the person that is, uh, make her complicated. And, um, and she's, she was a big personality and, and did some things that were really, I think, tough to swallow. So, um, but I'm, I'm proud of the show for not sort of um, pulling back from any of that and, and trying to pump the brakes at all. And, and I'm proud of myself for, putting my head down and, and doing it. So, um, you know, uh, when you look at uh, your career uh, in film and television, uh, it seems like the most prominent uh, uh, regular collaborator that you've worked with is Ryan Murphy and the projects that are adjacent and that he's adjacent to. Uh, what is it that you most love about working with Ryan Murphy and his projects? 
But what I have loved the most about doing it is that he was the first person who was so um, interested in giving me a shot. And that will create a kind of bond and a, um, uh, what's the word, like feeling tethered to a person forever, that creatively, um, at a time when nobody was very interested in me, he sort of saw something in me that that made me then believe in myself. And so that the power of that cannot can, you know, cannot go overly state like it, it, there is no way to state that more uh, powerfully or profoundly in terms of where it lives in me. Um, so that then then created a, a real sense of um, collaboration and an opportunity, you know, he just kept throwing me the ball and saying, you can do this, you can try this, try this. And it was just sort of like catching something coming, you know, at me full force and then just going, okay, and now what do I do? And he just was like, run, and I would just go, you know, and that that is a very rare, special thing. And he gave me that enormous gift and I will be uh, forever grateful for that, uh, no matter where I find myself working, you know. Well, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best over this award season. And okay. to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions for this year's Emmys. Thanks so much for joining us.